That was impressive. You can go ahead and thank them. <laughs> that is not an easy piece, that organ piano duet. Um, welcome this morning. I'll give you some further announcements in a minute. But this is a huge celebration day, not just because we have six kids getting confirmed and affirming their faith in Jesus Christ, but also because for Lutherans, this is the 500th anniversary of our Reformation. Now, knowing that we have lots of guests here today and knowing that maybe some of the members here don't quite remember all their Lutheran history, I thought maybe, maybe we should have a quick little history lesson about the Reformation and we're gonna do it Hamilton style. How does a German Catholic son of a Saxon and a minor dropped in the mire of the Holy Roman Empire from the working class without a hint or intimation grow up to start the Protestant Reformation? His deviation from prescribed traditions sent a shock across the nation's tested relations. It even tried the Pope's patience and led to his vilification. The church was stressing, obsessing about their unification. See, every day indulgences were sold out in the market. John Tetzel and his men would bark out, Put the coin in the coffer is the offer, and your loved one's soul goes free. Salvation's all about good works and money, don't you see? Well, a hero was smart, and soon this practice took its toll. He recognized that Tetzel was just full of papal bull. Got a quill and ink and paper and spoke out against this feces. Nailed it to the church door, called it 95 Theses. Well, the word got to the Pope. He said, this dude is insane, man. But he started gaining traction all across the German mainland. Go reform the church. Don't forget from whence you came. And the world's gonna know your name. What's his name, man? His name is Martin Luther, yeah. I said his name is Martin Luther, yeah. And there's a million things he hasn't done. But just you wait, just you wait. When he was 17, his dad sent him to college, wanted him to be a lawyer, a Bavarian Perry Mason, with no objection, presenting no defense. He obeyed his father's wishes cause it seemed to make sense. Then one day in a thunderstorm hiding from the lightning, he's frightened. He cried out to Saint Anna, save me and I'll become a monk. Because this storm is freaking scary. He made it out alive and now he's in a monastery. Well, Marty was pious and devout, doing everything he could. He was ascetic, yes, I said it. He could whip it real good. But he realized nothing he could do could take away his sin. So he started searching scripture and found something for the win. In Ephesians 2, old Marty saw salvation is by grace. And the Catholic Church tradition may have gotten out of place. We need to trust the scripture, not just what the Pope might say it. And Romans 1 says clearly that the just shall live by faith. Romans says that the just shall live by faith. Romans says that the just shall live by faith. Romans says that the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. Good old Martin Luther, yeah. We are waiting in the wings for you. You would never back down, you truly were ahead of time oh good old martin luther yeah the christian church sings for you you weren't looking for wealth or fame but now everyone knows your name the world will never be the same oh the church was badly needing this foundation it could land in at the Diet of Worms, despite their urging, he was not recanting. Unless there's proof from scripture, which there's not. So here he's standing. He taught with him. They're not with him. They trusted him. She loved him. And he, he's the dumb Pope who fought him. There's a million things he hasn't done. But just you wait. What's his name, man? His name is Martin Luther, yeah. Right? You got it from And there'll be a quiz before we do the affirmation of faith. Yeah, good. 
All right, welcome. I'm Pastor Lisa Dietrich, pastor here at Fredsville. If you are a guest with us this morning, we are thrilled that you are here with us. We hope that you're celebrating with one of the kids. If you're just a guest who stumbled in off the street today, we are thrilled that you're here with us also. And all of you are always invited to all the ministries that we have to offer here at Fredsville. Um, I hope that you will stick around. After worship, uh, there is cake for the confirmands and for all of the guests that are here with us today. And then following that, we're going to have a little Reformation German celebration. So there are burgers and bratwurst lunch, a jello potluck, because that's what Lutherans do best is jello, and a keg of root beer. Huh, sorry, but it's root beer. But stick around, we'd love to have you join us for lunch. There's always plenty. So stick around for that and celebrate with the kids. Following the worship service, if you're interested in getting pictures with the kids um, up in front, we will take as much time as we need to after, after worship. If you're a family member and want to take pictures during the worship service, that is absolutely fine. Feel free to do so. Um, it's an important day. I just ask that, ask that you stay put in your seat if you can, but it would be okay to move forward if you need to. And the kids will be up here, so if you want to move to their spot to take pictures, you are welcome to do that. This is something to be celebrated, and we welcome you doing that. Will you please join me in standing now as we begin our worship with the confession and the forgiveness of sins. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, the one who fashions us, the one who heals us, the one who reforms us again and again. Amen. Let us confess our sin, calling for God's transforming power. Source of all life. We confess that we have not allowed your grace to set us free. We fear that we are not good enough. We hear your word of love freely given to us, yet we expect others to earn it. We turn the church inward rather than moving it outward. Forgive us, stir us, reform us to be a church powered by love, willing to speak for what is right act for what is just, and seek the healing of your whole creation. Amen. God hears our cry and sends the Spirit to change us and to empower our lives in the world. Our sins are forgiven. God's love is unconditional, and we are raised up as God's people who will always be made new. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Glory be to God. Glory be to God on high. Glory be to God.
The peace of the Lord be with you all. Here at Fresville, we have a little boy who has cancer. He's only five years old. And so we've been sharing the peace in different ways as to not to shake hands and share germs. So if you will stand up and today to pass the peace, we're going to have some fun at celebration. You're going to bump and rump. So please stand up and pass the peace with one another. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. you may be seated.
In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Loving Lord, we are your living house. Make of us a holy and sure dwelling place for your presence. To the honor of your glory and steadfast love, in Jesus' name, amen.
The lesson for this Reformation Sunday is found in the first book of Kings, chapters 5 and chapters, uh, chapters 5 and 8. Now King Hiram of Tyre sent his servants to Solomon. When they heard that he anointed him king in place of his father, for Hiram had always been a friend to David. Solom, Solomon sent word to Hiram, saying, You know that my father David could not build a house for the name of the Lord his God because of the warfare with which his enemies surrounded him, until the Lord put them under the soles of his feet. But now the Lord my God has given me rest on every side. There is neither adversary nor misfortune. So I intend to build a house for the name of the Lord my God. As the Lord said to my father David, Your son, whom I will set on your throne in your place, shall build the house for my name. Then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes, the leaders of the ancestral houses of the Israelites, before King Solomon in Jerusalem, to bring up the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord out of the city of David, which is Zion. All the people of Israel assembled to King Solomon at the festival in the month of Ethanim, which is the seventh month. And all the elders of Israel came, and the priests carried the ark. So they brought up the ark of the Lord, the tent of meeting, and all the holy vessels that were in the tent. The priests and the Levites brought them up. King Solomon and all the congregation of Israel, who had assembled before him, were with him before the ark, sacrificing so many sheep and oxen that they could not be counted or numbered. Then the, peace, then the priests brought the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord to its place in the inner sanctuary of the house, in the most holy place, underneath the wings of the cherubim. For the cherubim spread out their wings over the place of the Ark, so that the cherubim made a covering above the Ark in its poles. The poles were so long that the ends of the poles were seen from the holy pr place in front of the inner sanctuary but they could not be seen from outside. They are there to this day. There was nothing in the ark except the two tablets of stone that Moses had placed there at Horeb, where the Lord made a covenant with the Israelites when they came out of the land of Egypt. And when the priests came out of the holy place, a cloud filled the house of the Lord, so that the priests could not stand to minister because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. Then Solomon said, The Lord has said that he would dwell in thick darkness. I have built you an exalted house, a place for you to dwell in forever. Here ends the reading. Thank you, Tom. I'm going to have you each stand up for just, what, what, I'll tell you when. Um, <laughs> they're so, okay, we're going to stand up. Um, I'll tell you when, because I want to introduce you. And then if your parents will also stand up when I introduce your kid, that would be great. So we're going to go backwards. So that means your last page, okay? So Sawyer, please stand up. Sawyer Wibben and his parents are Angie and Travis. Awesome. Sawyer, come stand by the baptismal font. All right, Ryan Shoemaker and her parents are Chris and Kelly Shoemaker. On the other side, please. Dylan. Dylan Ort and his parents are Matt and Sarah. Either side, you get to pick. Sierra, ma'am. Sierra Loger and her parents are Lance and Melissa. Drew. Drew. Drew Larson and his parents are Brett and Dina. And last but not least, Paige Fromm and her parents are Jared and Aaron Fromm. Do you see what they all did? what they do? Boy, girl, they've done it for three years, let me tell you. All right. I had your parents stand up. By the way, I'm going to go ahead and talk to them, and you all can listen in. And my guess is some of what I might say just might apply to you, too. All right, curl around here a little bit, will you? Perfect. Come on around, Paige. Awesome. Well, no, let them get some pictures, Drew. There you go. Good. All right. All right. So some of you when you were babies, some of you when you were older, came to a baptismal font, right? 
And what happened at the font? You got water on your heads. Thank you, Ryan. You got water on your heads. Why did you get water on your heads? Exactly, Dylan. You, because your parents wanted you to be baptized. Now, I'm going to hand this to you over here. Why did they want you baptized? you have any idea? Any? <gasps> Look at you, Ryan. Like, she's like the prize student. She said, to become a child of God. Look at her. She's like, I am getting confirmed today. <laughs> exactly, because your parents wanted you to be a child of God. And when they brought you to the font, whether you were a baby or whether you were a toddler or even much older, it doesn't matter when you were baptized. It still means that no matter how old you are, even if you're 53, you're still a child of God. And as I was thinking about all of you, the last several weeks, because these sermons aren't always the easiest for me, because I always get emo. Get emo. But I was thinking about all the things that we have done and the things that we've been through, and, and not just the giant Jenga, and not just crazy things like you sitting on your mama's laps and being fed baby food, in particular peas and carrots and squash and wonderful things, right? Um, but your mamas absolutely loved every bit of that of finally getting to hold you on their laps again. And we learned that night what it means to be a child of God. But I also spent a lot of time thinking about your parents. And why is it that we bring our kids to the baptismal font to be baptized? And then what does it mean that today you stand up and say, I'm going to affirm my faith? And thinking about all that and then also thinking about this craziness of you will be the class that gets confirmed on the 500th anniversary of the Reformation. Of Luther standing up and saying, it's all about grace, people and nailing those 95 theses to the castle door and declaring something new in the church. I was thinking about your parents and thinking about them coming and bringing you, some of them, most of them, carrying you as a tiny little infant to a baptismal font and saying, God blessed me with these kid, this kid, and now I'm returning them to God. And may God fill not just their hearts, but fill their souls. And may they forever know the love of Jesus Christ. And then I thought about truly all that craziness that we've been through, but then the years of looking at a lot of Bible and a lot of scripture, the Old Testament, Testament and the New Testament, the year of studying the small catechism and, and the Ten Commandments and the Apostles' Creed and the Lord's Prayer and having time to pray together, and I remember sitting and watching your games and cheering for you. And I remember sometimes texting you and watching to see if there were tweets that you had put out. And then there have been all the stories that I've heard about you that you aren't even aware of. Stories of how sometimes we got a little attitude a little attitude. Sometimes how you can get real stupid and make lots of mistakes. And sometimes absolute pride your parents have in you because you got an awful lot right. I've been thinking about Martin Luther and the courage it took for him to stand in front of a castle door and stand against a church that he believed wasn't doing the best it could. And I think about the courage you are each going to have to have to stand up in a world that isn't always doing the best it can. That's what it means to be an adult in the church. When we met and talked about that, the shock on your face to know that you were gonna get to help decide a quarter of a million dollar church budget that's the simplest thing you will get to vote and decide on. But every single day, God is going to put in your heart this passion and fire in your belly of the Holy Spirit to follow God's calling in your life. 
And sometimes that's not going to be easy. Sometimes that means that at school we've got to stand up against bullies and stand up against people who see things. And stand up against things that aren't right, whether it's your teacher or your principal or your best friend or your worst enemy and your shame in your boots. But you're still called to do what's right. And when you're older, even, or maybe even now, it is calling in a fire in your belly to sometimes stand up against your parents or even the world and say, we can do better than what we're doing right now. I thought about this Sunday, and this Sunday is always is important to me as a Lutheran daughter. But I want you to look a little bit to see what I'm wearing. What are they? They're red shoes. These shoes are incredibly important to me. Girls, shoes matter, all right? Shoes matter. And these are my power shoes, is what I call them. They are the shoes that I wore at my ordination. Because when a woman or anybody is ordained as a pastor in the Lutheran church, the color of the day is red for reformation and that you are called to reform and to change and empower the church to be exactly what Christ has called and asked it to be. So today, wear your red, whether it's a bow tied to a flower, whether it's your necktie, but wear the power because now that power, that Holy Spirit, no longer rests with your parents, but is now in each and every one of you. When I lay hands on you in a few minutes, and your parents do as well, we will pray that the Holy Spirit will fill you up, will empower you, will give you good courage, will bless you, will strengthen you, and wash you in grace today and every day. May the glory of what we do and everything that you do from this day forth and forevermore, may the glory of what you do be the glory to God. Congratulations. Amen. Congratulations. stand and sing with us.
At this time, I would invite the confirmants to come forward, their families to stand behind them, and the rest of you may be seated. Yeah, bring your sheets with you. You can have as many of your family members up here as you want, so crowd around. So Aaron, pick up the microphone and pass it. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you for these brothers and sisters whom you have made your own by water and the word in baptism. You have called them to yourself, enlightened them with the gifts of your spirit, and nourished them in the community of faith. Uphold your servants in the gifts and promises of baptism, and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Parents, what do you want to tell the children? We want to tell them that at one time we wandered in darkness. Children know the fears of darkness. But we want them to tell them that a man named Jesus Christ came and took our hands and held him tightly so that we would be safe. Children know about holding hands with someone who can make them safe. We want to tell them that this man, Jesus, led us into the light and that, there, that that's where we live now, in the light. We want each of our children to know what it means to go from darkness to the light. It's sort of like when nighttime comes and you run upstairs in a hurry because you feel like something will get you and you run as fast as you can and turn on the light and you feel safer. Then you go and find your mother or your daddy or somebody who will put their arms around you and then you know you're safe. That's why adults come to church. They come to be in the light. And when they come, they realize that there are a lot of people in this world who don't know about the light of Christ. There are people wandering around in darkness. They're hungry, and they have people yelling at them at all the time. And they can't do anything right, and their best friend moves away. When they do something that they think is good, nobody bothers to tell them that it's good. They get sick and nobody cares and they don't have a warm bed to sleep in. And just when they're, they're shivering in the darkness, somebody comes along and pushes them and then they're lying in the darkness crying. That's why adults come to church. They come to thank God for the light and they go into the world to find people who are crying in the darkness and they pick them up and carry them into the light. They wipe away their tears, and they tell them that they can stay in the light, and they hold their hands so they won't be scared anymore. What do you want to tell the children? We want to tell them that Jesus calls them to him, and he loves them just the way they are. We want to tell them they are cherished and that we love them fiercely. We want to tell them that here in this church family, there's a lot of hand-holding going on because Christ leads us out of darkness into light. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, to reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? All of you gathered, do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, 
and the life everlasting. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. For the church of Jesus Christ throughout the world, its continual renewal by the Spirit and the truth that makes us free, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For the magnificent wonders of creation, the life-sustaining water and air that surrounds us, and the well-being of plants and animals that inhabit the earth, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For peace among nations, justice for those who have been wronged, and food for all who hunger, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. As we celebrate the 500th anniversary of your church's reformation, keep us steadfast to your gospel, and may we follow you in all that we do. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For your healing presence to all who are sick, your mercy to all who suffer, and your strength to those who are weak, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For the needs of this assembly, your gift of faith that sustains us, your grace that surrounds us, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For the saints of every generation who have passed on the faith to us, and for your word that abides with us in life and death, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. In your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. You have made public affirmation and profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God has made with you in holy baptism, to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and to share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth, if so, in turn, answer, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. Paige. I do, and ask God to help and guide me. Drew. I do, and ask God to help and guide me. Sarah. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. Dylan. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. Mike. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. People of God, do you promise to support these brothers and sisters and to pray for them in their life in Christ. We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, through water and the spirit, you have made these men and women your own. You forgave them all their sins and brought them to newness of life. Continue to strengthen them with the Holy Spirit and daily increase in them your gifts of grace, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Will the confirmands please kneel? Page is verse that she chose for today comes from Romans chapter 16. The God of peace will shortly crush Satan under your feet. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Please lay hands on page. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in page Joel the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith. Guide her life. Empower her in her serving. Give her patience in suffering. And bring her to everlasting life. Drew's verse comes from Matthew, verses, chapter 7, verses 7 and 8. Ask and it will be given to you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives and everyone who searches finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Please lay hands on Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Drew Allen the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith, guide his life, empower him in his serving, give him patience in suffering, and bring him 
to everlasting life. Sierra's verse comes from Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. Please lay hands on her. Shade and be nice. Lay hands on her. <laughs> Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Sierra Joe the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith, guide her life, empower her in her serving, give her patience in suffering, and bring her to everlasting life. Amen. Dylan's verse comes from 2 Chronicles chapter 15, verse 7. But you take courage, do not let your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. Please lay hands on it. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Dylan James the gift of your Holy Spirit, confirm his faith, guide his life, empower him in his serving, give him patience in suffering, and bring him to everlasting life. Amen. Ryan's verse comes from Isaiah chapter 41, the 10th verse. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid. For I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. Please lay hands on her. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Ryan Kendall the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith. Guide her life. Empower her in her serving. Give her patience in suffering. And bring her to everlasting life. Amen. And Sawyer's verse comes from Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 through 16. He thought we needed a paragraph. <laughs> you are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand. And it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Please lay hands on Sawyer. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Sawyer James the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith, guide his life, empower him in his serving, give him patience and suffering, and bring him to everlasting life. Amen. Let us rejoice with these brothers and sisters in Christ. You may stand up. We rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together we give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to all the world. Will you please congratulate them and welcome them. You may go back to your seats and we will continue our worship with the collecting of the offering. You may be seated.
please stand. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of Let us pray. God of life, you give us these gifts of the earth, these resources of our life and our labor. Take them offered in great thanksgiving and use them to set a table that will heal the whole creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and light. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you, lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give our thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise you almighty and merciful God through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant of my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Please come for all has been prepared this morning for communion. You will come down the center aisle, receive bread in hand, and either dip in the first cup holding wine or the second cup holding juice, and then you'll return by the side aisles. Please come for here in this place, everyone is welcome. You may be seated.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Holy and compassionate God, in bread and wine, you give us gifts that form us to be humble and courageous. Make your words come to life in our serving and in our witness. That we might speak a living voice of healing and justice to all the world. For Jesus Christ, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Receive the benediction. God, creator of all things, speaking reformation into being, Jesus Christ, savior of the world, raising the dead, Holy Spirit, living voices, calling and enlightening the church, almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen.